Hi, first grade. It's Ms. Gutierrez here with a cool read aloud about habitats. We're learning about habitats, what they are, what do plants and animals do in a habitat today? And as we read, I want you to think about the important information you are learning by using the details in the text. The skill you're working on today is identifying important information in a text using the details from the text. Repeat after me. I will use the details in a story to identify important information. One more time. I will use the details in a text to identify important information. Great job. Let's get started. Today we're reading about habitats and one of the most important things we need to do when we read is learn new vocabulary and understand what those vocabulary words mean. The first word that we're going to be thinking about today is survive. Put your hand on your heart. Survive means to stay alive. We are alive and so our hearts beat. This will help us remember the word survive. Shelter. A shelter is a place that keeps you safe from weather and danger. Put your hands in a triangle over your head or in a triangle over your head and make a house. Your home or house is a shelter from weather and danger. Habitat. A habitat is a place where animals or plants live that has food, water, or shelter. For this word, I want you to show me shelter, food, as if you're eating, and water as if you're drinking. A habitat has to have these three places or place has to have these three features in order to be considered a habitat. We're gonna start with our read aloud. We're gonna meet an interesting character and he's gonna talk us through what exactly a habitat is. Greetings fellow adventurers. You are here to learn something new and believe it or not, I'm here to teach it to you. I know you may be wondering what you could possibly learn from a rat climbing out of a dumpster but I'm Rattenborough, the most famous rat adventurer. I travel the world looking at plants and animals and all the different places they call home. I'm going to take you on a special adventure all around the world. You're going to learn about some amazing and incredible places and animals. And we're going to start our exciting journey right here. I know, I know, it doesn't look like much, but it's special to me and it has everything I need. Welcome to my home. This is the alleyway where I live. Take a look around. What do you see? There are trash cans, litter boxes, drains and dripping pipes, old buildings and gutters. It's a perfect home for a rat. It has everything I need to live. All things need food and water to survive. There goes that word again, right? Survive means to stay alive. Animals like me also need shelter. A shelter is something that pr protects you from weather or danger. A house or an apartment can be shelter. A tree can also be a shelter. So animals need food, water, and shelter to stay alive. My food comes from these trash cans and the litter on the street. My water comes from the gutters, drains, and pipes. And my family and I have a shelter down under some steps nearby. All of these things make up my habitat. There goes that word again, habitat. A habitat is a place where an animal or plant lives that has food, water, and shelter. It's true that my home, the alleyway, is not considered a natural habitat, like a forest or a pond. But with so many humans using up so much of the Earth's natural resources, some animals have been forced to survive in human-made habitats. Animals and plants usually live in habitats that are just right for them. Just as people can't live on the water or in the air, plants and animals can't all live in the same sorts of places. You don't hear about elephants living near the North Pole on all that ice, and you definitely don't hear about polar bears living in the desert. Pumpkins don't grow in the sea, and fish don't live in trees. I can tell you firsthand that rats can't live just anywhere in the world. 
I don't like the weather to be too cold and I need to live in a place where my food is easy to find. That's why I like my cozy little shelter under the steps. It is warm enough for my family and me. There's always plenty of water and there's always a good supply of food in the trash. Let's look around. You might have a park like this somewhere near your neighborhood. Here, the word park means a public area of land that is used for recreation and exercise. People like to spend time playing, in the, playing and relaxing in this park, but it's a habitat for many other things too. The grass, trees, flowers, and bushes in this park need food and water to live. Have you ever seen a park? What kinds of plants live in the park habitat in your neighborhood? The animals that live in the park share it as a habitat. That includes the pigeons that fly around looking for crumbs to eat, the squirrels, owls, and chipmunks that live in those trees, the bees, fireflies, and mosquitoes buzzing about, the raccoons and possums that come out at night, and even the frogs and fish in the pond nearby. I want you to think for a second. We just learned about parks where these animals live and about the alleyway. How are the alleyway and park the same? Turn and talk or whisper it to myself. You're right, the park and alleyway are both outside places, but that isn't what they share that's most important. The most important thing that they share is that parks and alleyways are habitats. They're places with food, water, and shelter for many plants and animals. Let's keep reading to find out more about habitats. What do you see in this picture? I know a lot of snow, right? And possibly a mountain. This is a picture of a place called the Arctic. Do you think? You could easily live in the Arctic with very cold temperatures and snow covered ground? Probably not. Not many things can live there, but later I'm going to show you some incredible plants and animals that do live in the Arctic. What do you see in this picture? I see a snow covered log cabin. I see a cabin with trees and mountains in the back. I see a building with trees in front. I see what looks like a home made of clay or dirt, a home out in a country somewhere, and another home made in the desert. So many different places. Let's read and see what Rattenborough has to say about these places. Most animals live, most animals have to live in habitats that are specific to them. But you human beings are very clever. That means we're smart. You can build habitats for yourselves. If you wanna live in the desert where there isn't much water with which to grow food or drink, you can build a pipeline to bring water to you, to bring you water for watering crops or for drinking. You can have food transported to the desert by road or rail because it would be difficult to grow food in the desert. And you can build houses for shelter so you don't have to sleep in the sand. You heard about ancient Egyptians and Mesopotamians living in the desert in the Middle East. How did they farm, grow crops, and survive in the desert? That's right. They built canals to bring water from nearby rivers or grew crops in rich soil near the river. In fact, people like you have been able to live in extremely hot, cold, hot, cold, and dry places. We're going on an adventure that will take us all over our amazing, our amazing planet Earth. Over the next several weeks, I'm going to show you some fascinating animal and plant habitats that might be quite different from yours. You'll see some wonderful and unusual places where things can live. I can't wait to show you all these interesting places, but first I have a lot to pack. Because we're going all over the world, I'm going to need a backpack full of gear. So hold on to your whiskers, I mean hats, and get ready for a marvelous adventure.
Ratton Burrow has just taught us many things about habitat. I want you to turn and talk. Why are habitats important? Remember, you can whisper it to yourself, or you can talk to an imaginary friend like Ms. Gutierrez. Why are habitats important? That's right. Habitats are important because they give us shelter, food, and water. And remember, shelter means that we're safe from danger and from weather. And that's the important thing of a habitat for many plants and animals. Today, we, were, we learned some really cool information about habitats. Habitats are a place where animals and plants live and survive, right? Survive because it has food, shelter, and water. For homework today, you will complete the activity sheet 1.1 on page 25. You will observe and think about a habitat that you live in. This is the page that you're going to be working on. It's in your activity book for ELA, for CKLA. It's in your activity book for CKLA. You will observe or think about the habitat you live in, okay? If you don't have this page, that's okay. You can make a blank sheet with, two, with the two lines you see here, like in a T, and write food and shelter. What are some food places around your habitat? What are some shelter that you know around your habitat as well? You will draw a picture and write a list of the food and shelter you see and upload it to Seesaw. The directions are on Seesaw as well, so you'll know, okay? What are food or shelters around your home? Draw a picture of these things on this page. And remember, a shelter is a place that keeps you safe from weather or danger. It was so fun reading with you first grade and I can't wait to do it on our next video. Ciao.